Hello, Phyllis Moore here, Philosophically Speaking. Please click like, share, subscribe, all of the above, and weigh in with your comments. Hopefully I won't say anything too outlandish, although I have been known to rant and ramble and go all around the bend. I've often said if I were a car, I would be a rambler. Some of you may go, what in the world was a rambler? Yeah, cars come and go. That was a brand many, many years ago. I don't know quite when, but I use that that particular brand of car because I ramble. That's all. <laughs> it's just a literal translation. But in any event, today I'm going to talk about the Yoko Ono Syndrome. And I have to tell you, if that's beyond your scope of understanding because you're much younger than most of us, um, Yoko Ono was the woman that is blamed for the breakup of the Beatles. And maybe you don't know who they are either, but the Beatles were one of the greatest bands of all time. And I was around when the Beatles came out. In fact, my dad was stationed in Scotland in the Air Force, and I knew about the Beatles before many people in the United States did, because the British invasion hadn't happened yet, and so all the music that I was familiar with as a very tiny young child was British music and the Beatles were really really hot really really popular in Liverpool where they started and they were taking that country by storm and then suddenly became very popular in the United States and came over here and did concerts and various things but after they had hit this huge success John Lennon one of the songwriters and leaders of that particular song sing singing group he met Yoko Ono, and soon after that, the band disbanded, and everyone blamed Yoko Ono and her horrible influence on him. And you know, and, and I'm gonna say I might have been guilty of that as well because that was the school of thought: was this woman, this woman came in and she broke up the band. You know, chances are they would have broken up anyway because come on, let's give John Lennon some credit. Do you think he might have had a brain in his head and said, you know, I've got thoughts and opinions too and maybe I want to do different things, whether it's musically or politically or, you know, just to be doing things for my planet or my world or things that I might be interested in and break free, whatever. But Yoko Ono got such a bad rap. I bring that up because now as I'm posting this or putting it together, the Royals and I mean Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, who is the American actress that he married, and oh my gosh, she has just dismantled the whole royal behavior that we're used to culturally for so many generations. Anyway, <laughs> but apparently they have made uh, comments and, and released a statement that they are no longer going to be doing some of the, the things that you know royals do in that they're not going to just follow protocol, they're going to kind of do their own thing and, you know, maybe live their own life. You know, they got married, they have a child, they're not necessarily living in Buckingham Palace under the wings of the Queen. I don't know why I have to keep going into that accent, but I like it. And like I told you, I had lived in Britain when I was a child, so I go back to that. <laughs> it's like a combination of Julia Child or every British accent I've ever heard. I do like the British accent, I'm just saying. But in any event, now Meghan Markle, former actress and, you know, this this chirpy that came about, you know, and, and swept Prince Harry off his feet and now she is wrecking havoc. Everyone's blaming her and it's like, you know, could it be that Prince Harry might have had a very tough childhood being in the shadow of his Prince Charles and Princess Diana going through a divorce and later his mom getting killed in a car accident and he has gone through a lot. And as an adult, he kind of became wild and had his, his, you know, his own moments, I guess, in the tabloids. And then he met this actress and fell in love with her and they have this lovely story. They have had this beautiful wedding and now they have Archie, this little beautiful child. He's never going to be king. The odds of him ever becoming king are minimal at best because his older brother is the next in line for that or Charles and then his brother and stuff. And then I think all of all of children in between uh, for William and Kate. So, 
you know, why shouldn't Harry be able to, I don't know, access a brain cell or two, honor his own heart and his feelings and discuss it with his wife and say, hey, you know, this is what we want to do. But everyone is so quick to blame the woman. Everyone is so quick to do the Yoko Ono school of thought. Oh no, why? But you know, I get it. I get it because I had that. I'm the Yoko Ono of one faction of family. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna be politically incorrect here, but there was once upon a time that my husband's dad, who is now deceased, so maybe the statute of limitations is passed, but actually made a comment to my husband before we got married and kind of hinted, if you will, that, you know, there was probably some hormonal reason that he was blinded and mesmerized by me. Oh my gosh. You know, I, I just was shocked by that because I thought, you know, and, I'm, and I'll use myself as an example because I remember going through it from that direction and not having a voice with that side of, of relatives because they didn't really get to know me and it, it just became like a divided thing. None of them came to our wedding. They just, I think, presumed that this, this wicked woman came in and just took him from us, took him from us. Now I'm talking like the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> but at any rate, there was a division there and there was blame attached to me as if I went in and mesmerized him or hypnotized him or whatever. And really and truly, that is doing my husband a disservice because he is awesome. He is this amazing, wise, deep thinker that has so much on the ball. I, I mean, I call him MacIver because Sometimes, you know, he will just amaze me with the things that he either knows or learns. He's a perpetual student, and I admire that so much. And I'm thinking that those who claim to have known him, said they knew him, thought they knew him, didn't know him at all because he continues to grow and be better and to learn and impress and and he encourages me to do that. So if, if anyone, anyone on the planet ever thinks I did this to him or changed him, no, I can't take credit. I really can't even take credit. These are things that I saw in him early on. He has a mind of his own. He knows very much who he is and he is comfortable in his own skin. Those are huge and wonderful and admirable qualities. And so, you know, I'd love to say, oh yes, I control the universe. I don't. Um, he has a mind of his own. And he chose early on to be heard and to share his thoughts, his opinions, his goals, his dreams, his aspirations. And I think we are really good for each other. So if, if I guess I'm, I'm not saying I'm like Yoko Ono or not, not likening myself to Meghan Markle or not, but I, I guess in the light of today's news that's unfolding, I just really relate because I've been wrongly, falsely accused of trying to divide a family or trying to take over. And the truth be told is I am with a very strong, independent, rebellious, you know, which are qualities I have as well, man who adhered to what it says in the Bible about a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his, his spouse, his wife, his partner. And I admire that because if you are looking over your shoulder all the time trying to please everyone else and not looking out for your own best interest and what will make you happy, I guarantee you other people in the family, other people in your in your office, in your path, anywhere, that's what they have done. That is the way you're gonna have a successful relationship or a successful marriage, is if you partner up with that person and you you say, you know what, everybody else, you know, train, this is what my husband says all the time, the train is leaving the station. Anyone who wants to get on board can, but if not, we're going, we are going. And he has always been very clear minded about our relationship and we are in a partnership and yeah sometimes we've had to travel alone other times there have been people who did travel alongside but 
make no mistake on this, I have a whole different impression and opinion and and thought about Yoko Ono, about Meghan Markle, because I have lived it. And if you have as well, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. That sometimes people are very, very quick to judge, very, very quick to make uh, impressions that are false, as if we have to blame someone. Isn't it possible, isn't it remotely possible that some of these women, these strong women, you know, that behind them or beside them, even better, beside them, is a man who is actually able to make decisions and, and maybe he just hasn't had that opportunity before or he hasn't taken that opportunity and now he is with the absolute right person that will encourage him and cheer him on and support him in being his very best self. Yeah, that's, I think, what's happening. But anyway, just some thoughts. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. Think for yourself. Form your opinions based on facts and not feelings. Because, you know, who knows? The important thing is that we all honor ourselves in terms of trying to be the best we can possibly be every single day in all our relationships. So do that. Do that for yourself. You deserve it. Take care of yourself. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.